Okay, so let's start going over the review. If you've got it, get that out. I know there were a couple of you that have already looked at it. Like you've already started in on it before today. So air high five to you guys. So um, now for those of you who have already started on it, do you have specific questions that we want to go over first? One, which one? Six. six. Ah, yeah, the most popular question of the day. So we're going to start with number six, okay? And then after that, we'll just start going through uh, maybe like one by one, okay? All right, so here we go. On number six on your study guide, the question says a student conducted an experiment to determine if solid zinc would react with aqueous lead to nitrate. She dropped a piece of zinc into a small amount of aqueous lead to nitrate solution. What do you think happened? Make a prediction as to what she found and how you know. Be specific. Okay. So first of all, let's start by writing down what we know. Let's write down our reaction as far as we can tell so far. Okay. So what did she start with? Solid zinc. Okay. So we have to know the formula or the symbol for zinc is just Zn. So solid zinc, okay, and she reacted it with what? Aqueous lead 2 nitrate. So the formula that they give you for that is PbNO3, 2. And then to represent that it's aqueous or that it's in a solution, you would just put Aq, right? Okay, so she drops a solid piece of metal into this aqueous solution. And aqueous, remember, means dissolved in water. It's like a powder that's been mixed up in water. Okay, so she puts this in there. So the question becomes, do you think, first of all, do you think anything will happen? And number two, can you predict the products if something does happen? Okay. What kind of reaction does this look like? What type? Single displacement. Good. Single displacement, single replacement, whatever they're calling it. So this is a single displacement reaction. Things that are in single displacement, we know that like displaces like. Things that are similar in nature will displace other things, or they can. Okay? So do you see anything, like, is this thing that's single, is it like something else here? What, what kind of element is zinc? It's what? I said solid. Well, it is solid for sure, but is it a metal or non-metal? It's a metal. Zinc is metal. Do you see a metal listed in this compound? Lead. Lead is a metal. PB is a metal. So those could potentially swap out. But how do you know if they actually would? So do you guys see where zinc is over on the periodic table? Zinc is number 30. Zinc is number 30, which is right there. Okay. And then lead is down there. It's like number 82, somewhere down in here. Okay. So how do you know if zinc could actually take its spot? What do you need to ask yourself? Yeah, you need to ask yourself if, um, well, always ask yourself about the single one. Is zinc higher or more active? than the one that's in the compound. So is zinc higher on the chart and is it more toward the left? So is it? Yes, zinc is higher up than lead and it's more towards the left side. We know the left side is the most active side, right? So could zinc kick it out? Yes, absolutely. Zinc is active enough to where it could come in and kick out the lead, all right? So when that occurs then, Help me predict the products. What would be made then? What do you think? Haley, do you know what, what got kicked out? Good. Yep. Zn takes the spot in the solution. They just switch out. So Zn becomes dissolved in the solution. It almost would look like it would disappear. It looks like it starts to dissolve and get eaten away. Um, and in the meantime, you'll start to see all these little crystals of lead come out of the solution and start to solidify. So you'd have solid lead 
and aqueous zinc nitrate. Okay, so it would be a single replacement reaction. So on question six, where it says make a prediction, this would work. Something like this would work as your make a prediction. And it says as to what she found and how you know, be specific. When I say be specific, I am looking for you to say you would know that the lead would become the solid in this situation. Okay. And then the zinc would dissolve in the liquid. That's what I'm looking for. All right. Okay. So does that help with number six? Okay, good. Hey, which by the way, that makes me think of, you remember the question about the gold yesterday on the predicting products? All right. I was really hoping you guys would pull from all of your movie knowledge of Pirates of the Caribbean, right? Okay. Would gold dissolve in salt water? No. It shouldn't. No. Because pure gold, see where AU is? Number 79. If you have gold, solid gold, and you have NACL, which is aqueous, that's salt water, right? And you put the gold in there, you have to ask yourself, is gold active enough to kick out the metal? Which one is the metal here? The Na, the sodium. Sodium is the metal. Where is gold in relation to Na? Is it active enough? Yeah, Au is there, kind of in the middle, it's number 79. Na is way over there to the left. This is much more active. This is not active enough. Gold is not active enough to replace the salt or the sodium in the compound. So pure gold, pure gold will not react. A lot of people look this question up on the Googles and Google will tell you wrong because Google is referring to like soldered gold, which is like gold jewelry stuff. And gold jewelry, a lot of times, they'll put other metals in there to make it harder and more durable. And some of those things will react with uh, the ions that are in salt water. Okay? But just solid gold itself. So that's why, you know, when you watch all those movies where they find all the gold, that really is true. Like, it, it legit could be there and be perfectly fine. And I was watching a video just at lunch, because I'm a total nerd, um, of where they're going, like, people go deep sea diving and they find gold on the ocean floor and they'll harvest it. And that's how they pay um, for like their year. <laughs> like that's, they, they go and they work really hard for two or three months a year. They, they harvest a lot of gold from the ocean. And if they have a good summer or whatever, they've got enough money to last them till the next summer. Might be something worth looking into as a side job. It's a main job. So, all right. Good. Okay. All right. Let's do another one. Does anybody else have one they specifically want to look at before we just start hammering them out? The what's one? Similar mass stuff? That's fine. Let's just start with number one and we'll start working our way through, okay? Starting with number one, it says find the molar mass of the following. Um, these are the ones where you really do just like look up their masses and you're going to add them together. Now, if you have subscripts, you have to take that into account, okay? But like, look at number one, letter A, where you have CO, that's carbon monoxide, CO. What I like to do on these is make a list of what I have, carbon and oxygen. I find their weight off of the periodic table. So like for carbon, you would find the atomic mass or the molar mass, which is 12.01, and you could just do 12.0, it's fine. Doesn't have to get super specific here. And then oxygen, you could just round it to 16. So to find the total molar mass, you add them. So here it would just be 28.0 if you wanted to. And the unit for molar mass, does anybody remember? Grams per mole, very good, guys. And grams per mole. Okay, let's go ahead and look at letter B. Letter B, you have um, CANO32. 
Let's make a list of the elements that are involved. You have calcium and nitrogen and oxygen. C, A, N, and O. Okay. Find calcium, C, A. Is that about 40? Nitrogen is around 14 and oxygen is about 16. That's the weight of each. Okay, and then you have to go back and multiply by subscripts if there are any, okay? Calcium, um, how many do you have of calcium in this compound? One, right? How about nitrogen? Two, very good. So nitrogen times two and that oxygen? Six, very good. Then you're going to multiply first and then add everything together. So if I have a calculator. Thank you. I knew if I waited long enough, somebody would help me out. So 164.1 grams per mole, right? 164.1 grams per mole. Okay, that's how you do those, though. Okay, so try that other one out on your own. By the way, on letter C, I just don't know how to use a computer. That's why that two is big. That's supposed to be a subscript. So AL2 and then SO43. That's supposed to be a little two, not a big two. Okay. So let's take a look. Let's see. It's 127. Those equations, did anybody try to balance those? Woo! Yeah, that second equation is a booger. I probably won't put one like that on the test tomorrow because um, I want you to be able to finish before February. Okay. Um, the second one, if you got that, congratulations. Here you go. I'm just going to, yeah, because we need to move along. So I'm just going to tell you these are the coefficients. Listen, if you are still having trouble balancing equations, there are games online. If you Google balancing equation games, they'll pop up all kinds of stuff that you can practice and review, okay? But here's the correct answer, okay? For the top one, I don't know if I can remember this. Did you guys start out with, was it four? And then what's the next one, Holly? Two, two, like, okay. So the ratio is this four AG plus two H2S plus, what is the next one? 202. I'm talking about the silver one, AG. Let's yeah, do that one. Just, okay, so it should be 4AG plus 2H2S plus 102 yields 2AG2S plus 2H2O. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Okay, now the next one starts with three. Three Cu plus eight HNO3 yields three CuNO32 plus, I didn't write these down. Is it two H2O? Four. Yeah, four H2O plus two, two NO. Okay. That's four. Oh, I know. That's a big one. It was rough. But yeah, that's that's it. I should write that down somewhere. So three, eight, um, three, four, two. Yeah. Is that right? How about that first one again? Four, two, one, two, two. Okay. All right. Good. That's the magic code. All right. Hey. So while we're here, though, on letter A, it says for the reaction that's involving silver, how many water molecules would be produced in the balanced equation? It would be two. You have to look at the coefficient. You look at the coefficient to tell you how many are there. So it's two water molecules. On letter B, for the reaction involving copper, what is the total number of oxygen atoms present on the product side? If you add them all together, it should be 24, 24 oxygens on the product side. And essentially, like if we did this right, it wouldn't matter if you're talking about the product side or the reactant side, should be 24 on both, right? Okay, 
How about letter C? What do the symbols S, G, L, and A, Q represent? Dayla? Very good. Solid, gas, liquid, and aqueous. What's the difference between a liquid versus aqueous? Uh, no crystals, but what? Dissolved. Yeah. Aqueous means it's been dissolved in water. It's got, well, I see what you're saying. Yeah, like you would have crystals or powder dissolved in water, like you stir it up. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So dissolved in water. Okay. Letter D for the reaction involving copper. Find the sum of all of the coefficients. Um, if you're adding up all the coefficients for the one involving copper, you should end up with 20. 20 would be the correct total if you did that right. Letter E, for the reaction involving silver, write the word equation. If you do it right, it should say something like silver reacts with hydrogen sulfide and oxygen gas to produce silver sulfide and water. I just want you to be able to write a sentence. I'll give you all the right words to use. You just got to know how to put them together. Okay. All right. Did you get the balanced equation for the decomposition of water? How would you write that? Logan, did you get it? Um, what do you think? I think so. It's like surprising. Yes, it should be. I hope. Okay. Um, I just put H2O okay. and then an arrow and then H2. Uh -huh. Okay, and so what we're going to do is H2 plus, when we write oxygen, it should be O2, okay? And when you do that, then that's going to cause a little kink in it. you got to go back and balance it, right? But this is the decomposition of water. Water breaks down. H2O yields H2 plus O2. If you balance it correctly, 2H2O yields 2H2 plus 1O2. Okay, a combustion reaction, guys, on number four. Write the balanced chemical equation for the combustion of ethane gas. Okay, if you're trying to combust ethane, tell me, how would you make that happen? What would you need to add? CO2 plus H2O. CO2 plus H2O. Good. Okay. So that's the skeleton, right? That's always combustion. Fuel, in the presence of oxygen, you have to add O2, yields the same two products every time, carbon dioxide and water. Then you just got to go back and balance it. Okay. So I'm going to leave that to you. You need to balance it. Okay. Um, on number five, if you're working that one out, the fact that they say something breaks down, what kind of reaction is this going to be? Decomposition. What gets broken down? What are you going to start with? SRCO3, right? Okay. So that's what you're going to do. I will try to post this video later and I'll finish it like today after school if you need the rest of it so you can go over it. Practice this. Please study. Uh, make sure that you know what you're doing.